If you're a solo musician or a band that deals with playback for live gigs, or even someone who works as a tech for live gigs, at some point, you've probably had to invest some time into learning magic workarounds to gear that does the job. If that's you, and you don't know what this is, we're about to be best friends. Every few years, the methods for making playback work at any scale changes, and it changes for the better. The technology just keeps getting more advanced, convenient, affordable, and even portable. Whatever your plan is for routing audio from your computer, whether that's backtracks, virtual instruments, vocal sends, maybe even like a guitar amp plugin, you need an interface that has enough output options. If you're gonna be using MIDI controllers for transport in your playback session or for VSTs on stage, you'll need a way to plug in your devices into your computer. If you're running in your monitors for your band and you want volume control over all of your tracks, You've probably looked at some like expensive rack mixer systems that can double as an interface. If you've ever wondered about like what may happen if your computer fails for whatever reason, you might be curious about redundancy to avoid disasters like that mid set so that you have like some kind of backup plan. These are all very valid obstacles and concerns that were a lot harder to navigate in the past. But this is your answer to all of that combined. This is the Play Audio 12 from iConnectivity. It's a playback interface that is packed with some pretty incredible features. For starters, you get 10 quarter inch balanced outputs on the back, a stereo feed from the headphone jack on the front, so you can utilize that headphone port as another two mono tracks, ultimately giving you like 12 mono outputs, or you can just use it at like a single stereo feed. You can connect up to eight MIDI controllers or keyboards or whatever to this using a powered USB dock plugged into the host port. You can run MIDI devices via RTP on the port on the back. So for example, you can have an RTP MIDI device that takes USB MIDI data and send it through an ethernet cable from like 300 feet away. So this is great if you wanted like a keyboard front of stage, but you keep your laptop either backstage or side stage, you have ethernet distance and you can send MIDI over that, it's amazing. And most importantly, it's a redundant playback system, so you simultaneously run the same playback session on two computers, and it will automatically switch over to the second computer if the first one fails or crashes, has like a power issue and just quits, whatever. It will keep playing that same exact session at the same moment that it dropped out and switched over. And you get all that for 600 bucks. Seriously, if you're running playback in a live setting, this may be the only interface or playback device that you need to purchase for like the next decade. I'm gonna show you how I'm utilizing this in my own rig, but first let me go over some ways that this might be beneficial in your case. For the amount of outputs, there's a lot of ways where having an individual feed of something from your session can help you out with your live sound. You can have your live sound person mix your tracks a little bit better for whatever venue you're playing in based on their acoustics. You can have more control over the tracks in your own personal monitoring. You can use stereo feeds of things. You can have multiple cue and metronome options for people in your band. Like say your drummer could have their own cue track that's dedicated to how they want their cues delivered. And your guitar player could have their own. You can keep your laptop anywhere you want. Off stage, side stage, with you up front, wherever. You won't have a ton of dongles for plugging in multiple MIDI controllers or devices to your computer. That's always a plus. You can easily route MIDI devices to their own ports in their software. So with Oracle, you can create presets of MIDI mapping and even channel volumes. So you have different band configurations for different types of shows. You can save it all there if you want. If you have a second computer that can run your playback session, even if it can barely play it, you'll have peace of mind knowing that uh, there's a fail safe there. It's kind of like the best form of insurance for like modern bands and musicians who rely on tech like this to perform. If you decide you just want to invest in another computer down the road, there's the option for that without having to buy a new interface. This system doesn't get in the way of your plan. It only enhances your experience. If you've gone down the route of say like buying the Behringer, any of the X series mixers and you tried to use them as like an interface for your laptop, um, this can work great like right in the middle of that signal chain to give you the option of redundancy. It would require more cables to send to your mixer as that kind of middle point, but I think that this with an X32 is kind of like the perfect end-all package for 
a band or artist at any scale, really. I've tried to make my system uh, like a budget, more watered down version of that. Let me show you how it all works in my rig. Okay, so this is my rack right now as it is like today. The signal chain that I have is that my laptop plugs into the front here. I'm using um, DJ Tech Tools chroma cables. Next to that, I have a little powered USB hub here. We have three different MIDI devices that we're using on ours. I might change this out in the future for like a Mio XM or something like that that's a lot more meant for this kind of application. The middle one would be my keyboard. The right one is the drum. I use eDrummin. This is the eDrummin device. We use this for our drum pads and those plug all in the back for our electronic sounds that go on the drum kit. If we move to the bottom down here, this is a splitter and this is just a patch bay, XLR patch bay. There's a stereo feed for like instrumental and percussion backtracks here and then all the drum samples are also coming through that stereo pair. Bass just has its own separate feed in case that needs to be mixed different for the venue. This is just how I have things set up in the Ableton session for the Play Audio 12 to be just perfect to our workflow for essentially everything that leaves the Play Audio 12. The first stereo pair is drums and that's all like percussion things. Next to that is all instrumental things. So that's everything from keyboard layers in the background to our virtual instruments that are coming through, uh, background vocals. The next send we have is the bass track and that's just a bass feed of every song that we're on because I don't usually play live with a bass player. The next send we have is a VST and that's just primarily for monitoring and it just makes it easier to hear what we're playing instead of having to worry about turning up the whole entire instrument mix in our ears. This is that front of house mix that I told you about. This is the left and right feed. And then the last one is the bass front of house. Really, this is like a, probably a waste of channels, but it's the easiest way to route it in the back because in theory, the bass could go through the splitter and then I wouldn't have to worry about having a second bass channel. In terms of how it's just routed and set up in this rack, it's just the easiest way to go about it because I have those output options on the back of the Play Audio 12. And I wouldn't have to worry about sending things out to the, then be sent back into another splitter. So let me show you the back to show you how it's routed. Okay, so up here on the top, these are all the outputs from the Play Audio 12. Sorry, I don't have a, I don't have four hands to hold the light and also do this. All of the sends come down from the Play Audio 12. They don't go through a splitter, they just go straight into our personal mixer. And then those other ones, the front of house ones, those are back there and those just go through the, um, the patch bay from out the front. There's only three of us on stage right now and that's totally fine for us. I only have the XR16 because you have the option of four aux sends. You have your main left and right. You also have a headphone port. I'm aux one and two. Ross is aux three and four. And then our drum is just main left and right. So we get three sets of stereo personal monitoring. From there, just aux sends out to our in-ear system. I do want to finish this video saying that like, I started building my rig out like two years ago maybe because I just didn't know where to start. Had I known from the beginning like this, is would have been like what I actually really needed and wanted. That price tag at first is like very daunting. You can definitely rent almost everything in this case. But to get here, I have had many different iterations of a rack and how I route things. And this is like version five because I got all this in stages, like not at once. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the video, I've hyped up this device quite a bit, obviously. But I think in any industry, like knowing your potential when you have the right gear is helpful in so many ways and can take the results of your effort to a new level. If you're a professional or have aspirations of being professional with something, there's a lot to be said about like the security of an investment. Sometimes that hurts, I know. But I think this is a device that will leave you feeling secured for many years to come.